from you both too. Um, Jennifer. Um, I am so done with toxic masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you, I'm sorry that I was late, I was in the Public Accounts Committee meeting, so I've missed some of what you said, but I've gotten a list of the things that you've covered. But I think it's probably um, important as you talk about toxic masculinity, I think there's probably a lot of people who don't know exactly what that means in terms of examples. Without wishing to ask you about your personal experience, what do you think might be examples that other people could understand of what toxic masculinity might be? Emer. Um, I think it's, 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 you know, it's young girls walking into a classroom and comments being made about their appearance. Mm. It's, um, you know, the, the little sexist jokes that, you know, women belong in the kitchen, why are you do what are you doing in this classroom? Like, th this is a, 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 it's a men's subject, you know. It's, it's little things like that, that, and I think they're all typically attached to societal stigmas, such as, you know, women typically being carers, women being nurses, stuff like that. Um, and it, I suppose, it's also like a series, like, not just in a classroom setting, but like, it's men don't cry, it's men need to be hard men, and you have to act and look a certain way you know, to be a man in Irish society, it's, you know, if you're not playing GAA, like, what are you? Um, you, you know, you're nothing. Um, I, I think it's that idea that I suppose has been ingrained in, in, ingrained in young men um, to, to act and behave these ways in school. And obviously that makes, it, it makes everyone uncomfortable. Like, teachers don't want to stop it because it's what they know, but it also makes them uncomfortable hearing it. So there's kind of like a fine line of, you know, you know, sometimes, you know, they might agree with them and then at other times it's like, we don't know how to stop this. Um, so I think, like Saoirse said, it's, it's education that's going to fix it, but it is typically, I think, in, in a classroom setting, like jokes and comments and um, sometimes even, like, you know, shoving people. Like, it, it can get physical sometimes, and I, I think that's definitely a worst-case scenario, but I, I've, I've seen it happen. Um, so I'm not sure. Does Saoirse have a difference? Saoirse? Yeah, I think the key thing is with toxic masculinity, the issue is once it begins in the classroom, it can develop into much more serious things um, in adulthood. Um, and see, the thing is with toxic masculinity, because we live in a patriarchal society, it's widely acceptable. Um, so um, young men uh, often learn from a young age that this is acceptable, that they can get away with certain things. And this can be really, really harmful um, in every single setting. Um, and I, I just think that, that, you know, at the moment, we are letting, uh, we are basically sending out the message that, that this sort of behaviour is all right. And it means that, like I mentioned, it, it, it perpetuates over time. And, and I think it's really important that, that you know, the government, but, but also teachers in general and parents and peers and everything, you know, reinforce that there is certain behaviour which is just not acceptable. Um, and also I, I think teachers need to be trained to recognise this certain behaviour as well from, from an early stage, before it gets violent, before it gets to the comment stage. Um, and I think one of the ways to do this is to have, you know, um, gender inclusive uh, education. So that's you know, talking about menstruation in a mm. class where there are people who don't have wombs. Like, I don't understand why you would split up a class based on gender. Um, or, you know, talking about consent um, in an intersectional way. Talking about pleasure. Like, we, we don't, we never talk about pleasure in the, in the RSC classroom. Mm. Um, and I, I genuinely think that, that if we break down these kind of sexual barriers, um, we will also break down gender barriers. They're tied into one another. Um, so, yeah. So it's about raising um, boys in ways, in, 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 in the in all the richness of life, you know what I mean, not in, in the traditional way, um, or not ascribing value, be it with the top of the class in football or, or and all, all of those those different things. I completely agree with you about the teaching of consent. It's not just what you're not consenting to, but what you are consenting to. I don't understand how you can teach consent without having a positive conversation about that and explaining what it is you are consenting to so that you can understand what you're not consenting to. Um, I remember meeting a group about two years ago who were trying to bring that in different ways into the curriculum. I thought it was really, really different, really advanced. I'd not seen anything like that before. And when we get to that stage in terms of RSE, I'll be very, very pleased. Um, I note that you did have an interaction with the department, is, am I correct, in relation to the development of the junior cycle RSE programme, is that right? The ISSU. So the, the department are developing the new programme for the junior cycle. Um, they haven't, as far as I can see, begun work either on the primary cycle or on the senior cycle. But do I did the ISSU get to contribute to the consultation, which was extensive, um, on the junior cycle RSE changes? 
Um, no, they very well could have. Um, it could have been a time when Sirius and I just weren't um, sure. in office. But um, to my understanding now, um, we definitely haven't been involved in, in senior cycle, but possibly. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely no, sure. No, that's fine. It's, yeah. it's because I, I, I suspect from my questioning of the Minister, I, I'm not aware that that work has begun yet, but I would very much hope that you would be involved in it and also that you had a perspective on what would be taught in the primary cycle as well. Just in relation to what you're saying about menstruation, I was talking to a teacher of um, young girls in... Uh, but, but girls who, who would be becoming aware of menstruation, you know, in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the very short years to come. And she's not allowed to teach them about tampons. And I just didn't understand it. I just didn't understand. She said because of the the religious ethos in the school, yeah. she's not. So I just don't. I just don't actually physically understand that. That's just a you know a matter of functionality. Um, I don't understand that. Are there any other examples? Like I mean, we've highlighted examples about problems in the RC curriculum as late as last year in relation to um, homophobic material having been included um, or you know ha having been available, having been there. Are there other specific examples like that that you'd like to highlight here today? that you're aware of? Yeah, I think, um, like, definitely there was the example of homophobic material um, being included, but there's yeah. also the example, and it's happening in all Irish schools, that um, same-sex material isn't being included at all. Um, so it's either it's not there or it's homophobic. There's no real in-between, yeah. unless your teacher is making the active decision to teach Correct. it themselves and going yeah. against it. And I think, I mean, a really good example was the report that was released yesterday by the Joint Committee on Education, and a recommendation is that they separate um, you know, your school's ethos from your RC curriculum. Yeah, I think that, um, I agree with that, just to, just to be clear. C could I ask you as well then, the extent to which you were talking about toxic, toxic masculinity spilling over into outside the school, whether it's uh, in, in different forms, do you, do you see that? Absolutely. Whether it's on social media or in person or... Yeah, I mean, often level. even on social media, um, like, you, I think you, it's very often that you'd see, um, like, we'll say, for example, the boys in somebody's class commenting on a girl's Instagram post and um, making jokes. Um, you have the option to share posts now, which is a big problem um, because they're sending it to each other. We also saw, I mean, the, the, the issues with image-based sexual assault where um, um, pictures, um, intimate pictures of women were shared into a Discord chat of mm -hmm. thousands of men. Um, and that's happening in Irish schools. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, in Irish schools, it, it's it's happening everywhere. I mean, like there, like I personally would know girls that have had images shared amongst the boys in that classroom, um, and it's a big problem because the schools, like you don't know how to report stuff like that. Um, there's there are statistics from um, the Rape Crisis Network of Ireland of 47 percent of adolescents they did not know how to report sexual harassment, so they just don't. Um, and and you know that's why I think so many women weren't surprised when the Discord servers came out because it was happening in schools it's, it's happening everywhere and you look at teen discos a teen discos are the worst things that i think ever happened to irish society and um, there are like young women and men assaulted at those um, and again nobody knows how to how to report them there i don't believe there is really a set system like there would be a third level um, I, I think ucd recently launched one um, and so did ucc and um, but that doesn't exist at second level so when things like this happen bouncers are not trained to stop it they're not bystanders, they don't stop it. Um, which again brings us back to the importance of the UCC bystander intervention because mm. it's not there. Adults don't even know how to, how, to, how to stop things like that. I, again, would personally know tens of women that have been assaulted at, at teen discos on the same night. Um, what? The same night. Um, and, and the same with young men. Like, it, it's, yeah. it's a systemic issue. Like, it's normalised in, in second level education. Um, like, harassment is... And it, it, and it all comes back to toxic, toxic masculinity. Like mm -hmm. Saoirse said, it... You need to stop it before it gets physical because it's what's creating things like this. It's a huge, huge concern for us. I mean, you, you know, and we have dealt with a module on sexual and gender-based violence already, but clearly this cuts into that. Um, I'm